Rolling, okay. Hey, it's Drew Neiser. I'm here with uh, Elements of Marketing and my friend Judy Hackett of DMB. Good afternoon, Judy. How are you today? Hi, Drew. Happy to be here today. Thank you. So here's the deal. We are doing, take, see, look at that little card. We are doing content marketing. And uh, uh, this subject is one that's uh, very near and dear to my heart. And I know it's uh, important to your business. First, uh, explain a little bit about D&B and your part of D&B so that people understand what the heck it is that you do. Sure. So I'm Chief Marketing Officer for the Emerging Business Unit at DMB, which represents about 80% of the customer subscriber base and then uh, about 40% of the revenues or close to 40%. And this emerging business really focuses on small businesses, uh, emerging businesses, micro, small, and on their way to, uh, to greater growth. Okay. So... And we're talking about how you've used content marketing over the last mm -hmm. uh, several years. I know this isn't a new practice for you. Just uh, from a broad standpoint, and part of the purpose of this video is if someone is new to content marketing, is that we sort yeah. of break it down for them. We start with a strategy, yep. for example, and, um, and then we, we get, gradually get into the tactics. So talk from a very 10,000 foot level about what um, how you decided to invest in content marketing and what your sort of strategic approach was. Sure. Um, several years back, we sat down and really thought through what we wanted to be known for. And when it came to speaking to small businesses, how we wanted to reach them. And we had a complicated product uh, or selling uh, proposition in that most small businesses and businesses just emerging, just getting started, didn't really understand why they had to build business credit. Uh, most small businesses are just so focused on just growth. They're not necessarily focused on protecting their, their business necessarily. And that's what business credit can do for them. It can help them um, protect and grow their business. But it was a tough educational play because it required so much education. We would have conversations um, with over 20,000 businesses each week, and they were conversations that lasted anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes because right. they really didn't understand what was inside uh, their reports. And we thought, boy, this is really, really tough. Um, we need to reach them in, a, in different ways. And so we used content to do that. Um, how we could further educate small business owners on the uses of business content, of, of business credit, and uh, Dun & Bradstreet scores, where they're used, how they're used. So we actually took, when you talk about a 10,000 uh, square foot view, we, we actually decided that it would be easiest to speak to them about uh, how they use business credit to manage cash flow, because cash flow is the blood of any small business. And um, in order to manage cash flow, um, you had to have cash and access to capital seemed to be the the number one issue of the day for most of these businesses. They needed it to get started and they needed it to grow. So we used access to capital as our thought leadership platform and we created content by first uh, creating a an indice. Uh, we worked with a university, Pepperdine University, and created a private capital market study. And that study then got published and utilized by the government and utilized by lots of different folks. And then from that, we created a website by which you could gather more information on the index itself and also other ways of accessing capital. So there was content there. And then we said, well, how could we take it to the, to the right to the hearts and minds of these small business owners? And we created events. So in preparation for those events, we created content. We went out to businesses and we asked them how they were raising capital, where their problems and challenges were. And we created video content around that. And, and we used that to market and promote the show. And then we got people to the show and we created evergreen content at the show that could be utilized on that website. And so you can start to see we build a 360 uh, a view of what content really is, right? 
it, it's not just, you know, creation of articles. It's yeah. creation of materials materials that can be used in many different formats in many different ways. And there's content that can be created for a very specific purpose or content that could be created for uh, evergreen purposes of education. And so from there, um, that was our sort of our first endeavor. And uh, from there, we created uh, more content to then educate business owners when they came to our events. So we created how to use your DMB, how your Dun & Bradstreet scores are utilized, how, um, how your, what your report means when somebody opens up that report, what do those scores mean and what, what is the purpose of them? We created a series of videos and now we use those, we co-brand those videos with others and we distribute that content. Okay, yeah, I've got now. I've got way too many questions. So, I, I, <laughs> but, I, but I first want to remind everybody, of course, that uh, Judy's interview on this uh, is in the book, the CMO's Periodic Table. Uh, you are on page ninety-nine, which is uh, okay. Uh, uh, second favorite character from Get Smart. So, congratulations! On that. <laughs> um, so Love that show. Uh, the 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 interesting thing, and I, I think the first thing that I took away from your program was this sort of virtuous circle that that content was not just one thing that you had this ten pole research and then you shared it at the event and you really kept that loop going. Um, yep. And it sounds easy when you describe it, but I know that it isn't. Um, and so I guess the first question that I have related to all of this content is. How much of it did you do in-house versus a uh, partner with outside firms? Yeah. Well, you know, you have to prove yourself first, right? That content is important and is meaningful and can make a difference. So we, of course, started to do that in-house. And we had a gentleman who uh, was very skilled in social media and social marketing, and he was a very good writer. And so we began with his content and his articles. And we noticed that uh, the, the articles that he was writing that were getting the most attention actually were around certain topics. And so we then said, you know, we really need to take, it, it'd be a shame if this content, especially our industry, to see um, and the results of all that content were just only utilized whenever the report came out, which was quarterly, and then we would do some social media. It would be a shame if it sort of got lost in the ethernet, right? And so we wanted it to live on forever. And then we created a, a website in-house. And so it was a slow build, but we did it mostly in-house right. until we created the events. The events were much more of an investment on our part. Uh, and in doing so, I wasn't going to create an event at which I was going to spend a considerable amount of money without creating a lot of content that then could be utilized um, for the future. So that's when we went out of house. And then now we go out of house much more often. Uh, we just completed, uh, now we're getting very, very specific and focused on industry content because the majority of our prospect base or even our free subscriber base um, fall into certain clusters mm -hmm. by industry. And so unlike who are working or a lot of B2B marketers who are working in the enterprise space and we do have that in the rest of our business you know where we are focused at dmb corporate on on our enterprise customers and our enterprise prospects by creating content around personas so the cmo or the cfo or the cto um, here in the small business world in the emerging world you know it's too broad to do that right so we we actually speak to thousands and thousands of business owners in all kinds of industries. But what we found is we had certain clusters uh, that we really needed to address in a more focused way. So it might be manufacturing or suppliers or construction. And we created very specific content around that. And we decided to right. go out of house to do that. And, and we did part of it in-house and part of it out of house. But there are certainly ways that you can do and it so, very affordably um, how because we did that for a long time. And even, and even when we went out of house, Drew, even when we went out of house, you know, um, I, I created four, four outstanding, I think, videos. And, and we own all of the content within this. So we can create many more from the interviews that we did. Um, 
uh, we, I think we had ended up with four or five different videos and I think we spent $70,000. You mentioned videos now. Um, How, uh, so how are those working relative to say just a blog post? I mean, what's the relative value and do you have some kind of an equation where you evaluate uh, this is worth creating a video versus let's just write a couple blog posts about it. (laughs) Yeah, I think, um, Blog posts are especially uh, useful when you have very timely content and it's right about what you want to get out today, what you want to communicate to either customers or prospects in the B2B world. Um, it, it's more content. Those type made when you really want content that's going to live, live on and can be useful in an educational format. Um, We we actually use a lot lot of our video content today. I think I lost your video signal there and you're just getting audio now, but uh, it's it's a single best way for our employees to learn the products and to learn their value and their usefulness. Okay, that's interesting. So in addition to the content uh, being useful for your customer, the same content is good to, from an educational standpoint for your employees. That's an interesting. And, and do you have a separate oh, yeah, content strategy for employees or this just sort of, this happened to work uh, where you could develop the content and they had you know, that dual purpose, the dual target. It ended up as a dual purpose. I, I would create the content and then I would, I would share it with our employees. Um, and I start usually with uh, more of our senior leaders when I, I do share the new content. And from there, they tell me, and, and, and I'm, going, I'm going to say in almost all cases, that uh, whenever we've created new content, the first thing the trainer says to me is thank you so much this so, uh, is makes is, my job a great, lot easier if, if your employees don't like something then uh, that's that's never a, a good thing um how are you using a marketing automation mm-hmm. system a marketo an eloqua or something like that in certain parts of the organization we are um and uh, in other areas we're not just yet so as you know uh dun and bradstreet credibility was acquired by dun and bradstreet just this year dun and bradstreet uses uh eloqua and um but we both and we both use uh the compost uh system to uh, create our content and manage our content internally um and we are uh now just determining whether or not we're also going to get so- on that system that same System. How do you evaluate? But, uh, yeah, and it's but it's so, worthwhile I mean, for sure. Look, if you spend a certain amount of money on Google, you can you can pretty much track that right from you know from click to lead to sale. How do you uh, uh, evaluate the effectiveness mm-hmm. of your of your content? You know, I think it's really interesting. I'm so glad you asked me this question because I think a lot of people go right to the uh, metric, you know, right to the system solution. And um, and I think there's so much more to to measure when it comes to cre- the creation and the usefulness of content. And I gave you one, which was employee um, as well, a training of employees. But um I'm going to just step okay. back and answer this question a little differently. And I'm going to say that, um, you know, there are different, there's different kind of content for different purposes. And when we created a, we created content around access to capital, it was for thought leadership. It was very strategic, right? When we created education videos, they were designed for distribution to get uh, to broadly distribute what business credit meant, um, and we did that by giving that that content to um, fintech platforms, to CDFIs around the country that were hungry for this type of content to educate business owners. Um, but then there's the type of content that actually drives sales, and I don't necessarily think that that articles and even videos are the best way to drive sales. I think that the 
in our case, the best content that we ever created was actually a free product. And it was, uh, as I told you earlier, very hard to, in an ad or in a landing page, to communicate all of what you need to know about managing business credit. And you certainly couldn't do it. We tried it in radio spots. We tried it even in television spots. You can't do it. What you what we felt was needed was to create a free solution by which there was no commitment. They could just sign up and they would easily have access to a free report. So just like in the personal credit space, this was the first ever free business credit report. And now they could actually look and see something that gave them an idea of what the health of their business credit was. It didn't give them their scores, but it said green, yellow, red. And it allowed them to upgrade on their own. And then they would receive content. They would receive right. alerts on this free product. And it would tell them if something had changed. It would say, it would let them know if somebody else uh, actually pulled their file. So they were getting value out of that, right? That's valuable content that then can drive real sales because now they want to open up that that report. They want to see more and they want they want to learn more. And so it really engages them. I think that's the most important thing for newbies to the content world to understand is when you think about content, think about the different types of content and what their intent is is all about, right? And don't right now it's we, we get into these conversations about, are you using this system, Marketo or Eloqua or the, to measure? Um, it's all very important, but I would never start there. <laughs> Don't start there. That is sort of, you know, you, you've got to understand first and foremost what you're, you're trying to do and what you're trying to deliver with content. And sometimes it's not, you're never going to take somebody from an article directly to a sale. You know, we take them from an article to a lead web form or to a chat, or we take them to an inbound phone call. We try to do that in all of our content so that there are ways for them to 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 reach out, for prospects to reach out to us. Um, you'll see that on all of Dun & Bradstreet's content, you know, web form, chat, et cetera. But in in our case, we felt the freemium solution was the single best driver. So we now have a half a million, close to a half a million wow. free subscribers to that product in just, what, 18 months or so. And from there, we have about um, an organic within the first two weeks, um, almost a 5% conversion to wow. a paid uh, solution. And then we nurture, what does that mean to somebody who's new? I mean, we nurture, meaning we then send alerts. We also send emails um, that have some of those educational videos uh, built right within that, that content, within that email. So if they want to learn more, they can about what this score might mean. If that score has changed for them, then they get a piece of content about that score, a video that they can look at to understand what it means. And we found that we then were able to achieve, in, as soon as we started that nurturing program, that we were able to move that almost 5% conversion, I think it's 4.7, wow. to almost 7%. And so so we we do that over the first so, 30 days. That's a and that, that to me, is measuring content, right? That, that's, that's real metrics. That's real money. That's real um, conversion. And that's well, what we all uh, want. So we want I call content. that type of marketing marketing a service. That's a chapter in the book. Remember, that's right. Yes. And I I love that because mm -hmm. uh, in your mm -hmm. case, this this marketing is essentially is another service. It's free. It gives them information and value. It says, hey, we care enough about you that we want you. We're going to give you something in exchange for your time. And having done that, they're assuming they appreciate that service that you provided, now they are willing to hear the rest of what you have to say. Uh, and so you, you've sort of, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, given them that it's a, it's, it's a lovely way of starting a relationship. Um, but it's amazing how many brands yeah. still just try to sell on the first date. Uh, and as opposed to any kind of mm -hmm. romance, here's some flowers uh, to, to get things started. And, 
I want to tell you a story because I, I, there, there's two. So this notion of marketing and service, by the way, is not new. Uh, it turns out, uh, so way right. back when Michelin, um, when they first started selling tires, uh, it was still very new to go around France. Uh, people didn't know what roads to take. So they created the Michelin Guide as a service to people with tires on their car. Of course, that became a, but that's. Yeah, wow. I never that's knew that. That's a funny story. I never knew that. one other that's sort of in the same vein of it's all. Uh, so Guinness discovered that in their bars, in their pubs, occasionally people had a difficult time coming up with things to talk about. So they came up with the Guinness Book of World Records, um, which placed in their pubs. And sure yeah. enough, that's become legendary. So who knows? Maybe your uh, free product someday will will be uh, on the lines of uh, of the you know, Michelin guy, but it's yeah. the, the notion of turning your marketing into something of value is really what content marketing is about mm -hmm. as well. It's, I'm going to give you something, you're going to be searching mm -hmm. for it. By the time you're ready to buy, I've been your friend along. Remember me, I'm the guy who got you here. Um, yeah. And what's interesting about yours is yeah. obviously, um, as we all know, when you get something free, there's usually a price. <laughs> And the, and the price is that you've got to give up your email. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an interesting thing. I, I mean, that's so it is a gated product. And I think a lot of brands sort of uh, have a tough time figuring out what should be gated and what shouldn't be gated. Um, what, was there any, you know, in, mm -hmm. in that case, I imagine that was an easy decision. Yes. No, it was actually very difficult because if you think about Dun & Bradstreet, um, you know, it, the company has been around for 175 years and you always paid for your Dun & Bradstreet uh, reports. Right. And so the notion of a free report, I think, scared a lot of people, um, particular, particularly our salespeople. And what we said is this is the right thing to do because small businesses, this may just be all they need right now. And if you expect small businesses to grow into medium sized businesses, to grow into your large enterprise businesses, then you darn well better be thinking about how you, you know, you grow, you grow that business. And so for us, it was pretty easy here to make that decision. We had to certainly engage our right. sales folks and get everybody comfortable with that. And we're about ready to do it again. I'm, I'm in, in about a week or so, we're launching another okay. freemium solution. So, um, and I think it's, I think it's gonna, you know, we're doing it in a beta and um, I think it's gonna knock the socks off of folks and especially smaller businesses that have always wanted the ability to manage multiple companies in sort of a portfolio format um, when it came, comes to risk. So will this vendor pay me? You know, um, and what's the likelihood of this vendor not paying me? How is it going to affect my cash flow? And so that's a whole new freemium solution that we're about ready to roll out. And we'll do the same thing. We'll nurture and and they'll see for themselves whether or not it's time when the time is right for them to upgrade to a Thank paid so solution. Well. Seems 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 natural, but it seems like a very simple, you know, natural thing to do. But um, it is very hard for companies who've always charged for their products and services to think about um, what it means to create free content um, that ultimately will lead more to customers, more customers, more higher value, more loyalty because you got them started. Um, in all of this content that you've mm -hmm. developed, surely there were a couple things that didn't work out exactly as you hoped. Um, and maybe some lessons that you learned as a result of that uh, effort. What's what what has what hasn't yeah. worked as well as you'd hoped? Um, you know, I think it it I think what I struggled with, and 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 sometimes still do. You know, sometimes there's great content that we produce, and it doesn't get distributed the way that right. I right. expect it to. Um, we tried things like, um, things that, that didn't work for us were paid content strategy pushes, um, you know, sounds good. Um, but in the end, you know, you're, 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 you're buying almost fake traffic, right? Um, so that, that, that didn't work for us. Um, another big struggle is, uh, just trying to find the best authoritative, uh, content writers, because you can you can 
sit around all day long and 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 have in, folks on the inside writing content for you because they you know they know the content they know your business but finding authoritative writers like yourself an author you know on a topic like marketing um it took us a while to finally land a few of those that we really felt were were strong partnerships and relationships. We did one with Access to Capital with Steve Strauss and small businesses. He has the Small Business Bible. Um, we created a another piece of content we did early on was a social media influencer uh, social media influencer awards and and we doled those out and oh you know you saw all these small business influencers fighting for the for, to get on our list and you know and then we we utilized um that as a means of engaging those social media influencers for the future and it's been a wonderful relationship with these small business influencers so i'd say that really thinking through that is important and you're going to make mistakes along the way we hired a lot of bad writers you know we then tried, you know, some of these um, content writing services and didn't work for us. For us, it's it, we, we found that the, the magic bullet was really hiring authoritative writers and, in, and then experts in our own industry and, and take it from there, you know. Um, but we learned the hard way, like everybody else. It sounds you know, like we had to case, try it. You're really saying that uh, quality trumps quantity and that uh, if it isn't, oh, yeah. it isn't at a certain yeah. standard, it isn't worth posting. Oh yeah, no. I mean, it's not worth it at all. Why? Why write it? Why? It's a waste of everybody's time, right? It's not going to get read if it's not, you know. So focus on the good stuff. And you know, it used to be marketers, uh, you know, that have been around the block now for a while. It used to be that you wrote, you know, content for a different reason. You wrote a lot of content. You wanted to. You might have created micro sites and and all kinds of um, uh, front doors, you know, to get you to uh, own your search in Google, right? <clears throat> that that world has changed and. Now it's about quality content that actually converts and um, or quality content, as I say, for a different purpose. First, maybe it's a thought leadership purpose, you know, to to own to own something in the marketplace. But um, so you have been I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, targeting small businesses. Obviously, there are a lot of publications that target it, Inc. and Entrepreneur. There are lots of uh, uh, people who have developed strong, as you said, influencer thing. Have you thought about what are the pros and cons of like syndicating content where you take, you know, you get an entrepreneur magazine or an Inc. magazine, some of their writers mm -hmm. to create content for you. Does that have the same value? Is it worth it? Uh, and I, I think it's probably, the answer is probably different for different industries. I think for uh, our industry, as I say, I thought it was very valuable to partner with Steve when we did. Um, he, already had a really strong connection with small businesses and he had done some work for uh, other other companies that serve small businesses and so i think people saw him as a real um uh, is providing you know right. really knowing his stuff and on the access to capital front you know we just didn't hire him to write and that's something that i think i would also advise people to do you know if you're going to partner with somebody who's really an uh, an authority make sure that you don't just do it in a in that writing capacity try to figure out ways to make them your partner so in our case we had steve host our access right. to capital events and and you know and and or you know, host a panel or, you know, just bring them in in different ways. We, we actually uh, packaged up his book and, and gave it away to small businesses who bought right. our products. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you got to find somebody like that, Drew. Your duty. I think it's going to be great for small businesses. Let's talk. Come on. We're in it after all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it worked, and you know I think I think a lot of our small businesses appreciated getting uh, you know something physical in the mail. You know today when you sell a you know a software as a service solution, you know as you know or you, it's something that's just you know not tangible enough that you can hold in your hands. It's fun to get something um, in your hands that's tangible, uh, and and I, that was just a fun well, thing. Well, I, I just want to hear that that was a successful program because when I get enough, okay, it was. It was, and we, yeah, we, it was. So I, I highly suggest that you go and find yeah, somebody to do that for I'm you. I'm working on it, believe <laughs> me. Um, all right, so if you were starting from scratch uh, in the content program, mm -hmm. what would sort of be the, the, the 
key steps or the, the things that you really should focus on at the very beginning of the journey? Well, the very first thing is, you know, writing is such an art. And, um, and, and as I, I've said here before, it's not just the, it's not just articles, but, you know, writing all kinds of format to be able to write multiple form in, in multiple formats and writing is just such an art. It's so hard to find good writers. Um, and, you know, whether you're writing succinct short copy um, for your website or your you, you want lengthy um, expert like articles, you have to, I'd say, start with good finding a good writer right. or writers and create create that pool that uh, trusted, um, you know, to deliver. Um, get, uh, I would say also that, um, you know, sit down and as I said before, think through exactly what you want that content to do and, and then figure out how you're gonna make that happen. And I, I think it's a strategy and good writing is the are the first two steps then it would be organization of that content. So um, how are you going to organize it? How are you going to keep all those writers that you have, um, you know, getting their material to you on time, updating it, getting it approved through multiple, it might be multiple, multiple folks in an organization. Um, we use Kapost to do that here and, uh, and found that that was just a, a easy way for us to manage um, all of that uh, content and and uh, folks seem to find it easy to use. Um, then I guess I think you know as part of that strategy, you really have to determine how you're going to distribute that content and who who do you want to see it. Identify your audience and your targets and be very focused on exactly what you want that to do. The more focused you can be, um, and I think in uh, content. Providers. I mean, most companies just started by having somebody in their Marcom department start drafting articles and posting them on their website. Right? Um, it, you know, it's we, we've got we've gone a long way since then. But for a small business that might just be getting started, um, it's strategy, strategy, strategy first, and then good, thoughtful writing. Um, dependable writers, authoritative writers, as I said, experts and um, organization of content and then distribution of content. Those are the things that I would focus on first. And, you know, as part of your strategy, certainly you've got to think about how you're going to measure its success. Um, for, for us, uh, we measured our success by the, on access to capital by the number of people that showed up at our events, by the viral component of how they spoke about our events, about how, you know, I went to... Uh, the Clinton Global Initiative, and I actually met President Lincoln, uh, President Lincoln, President Clinton, and he said, and it, wouldn't that be great, President Clinton, and he said to me, um, oh, you're the, you're the guys that do the access to the private capital market study, and I said, yes, sir, and I, I saw that you, you mentioned us recently on a television show, and he said, yes, and I said, well, I just wanted you to know that we've updated that content uh -huh. since, and and I'd like to get you the new report. He said, please do. And he handed me his actual business card. And that evening, I uh, sent him off the new private capital access uh, index. With a presidential endorsement. Exactly. That's a, that's, that's a great. That's when you know your content. For me, that was, you know, that's how I knew my content was working, right? He, he knew it existed. He used it. He uh, used it on a talk show. And uh, and when he met me, he associated my, you know, my being with Dun & Bradstreet with the content that we produced on, on accessing yeah. capital for small businesses. And that was hugely rewarding. So figure out what you want out of your content. That that would be the number one thing I would. Advise. You know, I, uh, I, I want to add to that. And I think if, if a small business was watching the video, the one thing I would say to them is, you know, first pay tribute to Lord Google and, <laughs> that, you know, answer. Create the content that answers the seven questions that everybody wants to know about your business. Make sure that those yeah. are answered and answered really well and on in a personality that is reflective of, of your business and, and of your brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and often, I, I think that, uh, you know, you talked about this with writing, but I think it's a bigger issue than just writing. It's, it's most stuff is boring. 
and nobody mm. wins with boring. Uh, and yep. that's, you know, the art of as, you know, storytelling and really creating content that is worth reading is so much harder than anybody expects. But the, you know, even if your, uh, your, your subject seems like it could be boring, if you are interested in it and you can tell it in an interesting way, people will get yep. excited about it. And so I, I just, I can't emphasize that enough in this whole thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a good point, Drew. I think emotional connection, you know, is, is if you can make make sure that somehow you're connecting, <clears throat> there's got to be relevancy. I think I, I've spoken to you about that before, that it wasn't enough for us to create a, a customer story um, about their success. It was a customer story that would connect and emotionally <clears throat> connect with with others. And then making it relevant enough that people see this and want to share it. Right. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that I guess this sort of, as I, as I start to bring this to a close, I mean, one of the <coughs> great fears that, that, that I have for you know, people heavily invested in content is that every brand's a content marketer now. And so everybody's mm -hmm. creating videos and blog posts and social content. And, you know, and I don't know if you noticed it, but it seems like it's getting harder to get someone mm -hmm. to, and I've seen it on my LinkedIn posts where, mm -hmm. you know, a year ago, those might've gotten, you know, a thousand views. Um, now, because there are <coughs> thousands more bloggers on LinkedIn, the numbers are just down and I, it's the same writer. And it's not like any one of those articles was better uh, six months ago than now, it's just there's, I see it as a proliferation of content uh, yep. problem. So how, competition. How do you, you got some competition out there, Drew. I know. <laughs> I know it's a bitch. Uh, that's why we're doing blabs so we can, uh, we can <clears throat> come through a video. But, and it does, it begs the question as you look ahead, how are you going to sort of keep finding some, you know, some blue ocean here, some room for DMB to voice being heard, or, or does it just become a shout out, yeah. a shout out yeah. again? Yeah, no, that's a very good point. <clears throat> um, we are doing that by focusing on the personas, as I said, mm -hmm. in cases of businesses that, you know, are smaller, but have marketers or have, um, you know, for our Hoover's products and solutions or for CTOs that are interested in certain data uh, components that we have products or services. I think um, more narrowly focusing your content um, so that you're competing with less, yes. <laughs> you know, less folks out there. So um, the more it's the more you can do one to one marketing. And there's some really interesting things out there that are going on with one-to-one -one when it comes to content. Um, you might have heard of a company, I think they're just a, a startup still <clears throat> called Star Greets. No, I haven't heard of them. But some some brands are are utilizing companies like Star Greets. I, I tried it here. I think we were a little before our time. Um, <clears throat> because we do such good one-to-one -one marketing here when we do um, direct mail campaigns, we can actually tell a prospect or a customer exactly what's happening in their file. And, and we can do that in a, in a, in a letter, for instance, or an email. But how do you, how do you do that if you don't have in, in, in a video world, for instance, let's say, how do you create one-to-one -one messaging um, through video? Star Greets has figured that out. Interesting. Oh, and you know, I've seen and that. So, yeah. Um, so, so we put multiple variables, you know, yeah, the video comes to you and it's, hi, Judy, and they know right. I live in Santa Monica and they know I just bought a Toyota, you know, and that is very, very effective. So I think did you really up, narrowing in. Did You and I Pardon talked me? about this a couple of years ago and I had suggested yeah. you another company, there's a company called Itamu um, that does the same thing. Uh, and in fact, we have a, 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 a you have to share that with me again because I get forgot. Yeah, I forgot the conversation. I do moo. I D O. I do moo. Okay. I do moo. They're, they're Israeli based, and uh, we know of one client who used it uh, in the utility area uh, to great success. And uh, in, yeah. anyway, it's, but it's exactly the same thing. And now that I recall that you had mentioned this uh, uh, Star Greets to me, that yeah. I think is. So, yeah, we we we. 
we tried it and and we we were able to send a video in an email right. that you know gave them very specific information about their business um the funny thing was in, in the end i tried the same email with by sh and shortening the video and putting less of that variable content in it and then i tried it and did an A-B test without the video in it, and it actually performed better without the video. Uh -oh. So, you know, so it was a moot point, you know, for us, at least for what we were trying to do. But I know brands that are using it very effectively. Right. So um, more consumer-oriented brands. So it's, right. it's worth it because I think it just depends if, you know, the, the, the person receiving this finds this to be a little off. Off put, you know, off putting right. because how do they get that personal information of mine? Really you know, it might, yeah, it might be before it's time. Yeah. But I just I point that out only because I think to answer your question, I think the more focused, the more targeted, the more that it feels one on one, right. the better this content will impact. You know, will give you the impact you're looking right. for. And you had hinted to me in an email, and maybe you already, that you have something new on the horizon or just launched. Uh, is there anything that you, as you forward looking, that you can sort of talk about or, or, or tease us uh, in terms of? Well, no, I, you know, I felt this goes back to what I was saying about co creating content that is shareable and relevant and so forth. So, you know, we, we, decided to do this very industry specific content we created these beautiful emotional stories that um, that we created in construction manufacturing and supplier because these were our our largest clusters of, of uh, customers and we thought why not let them tell our, our story for us um, but once they were done I thought oh my gosh I just we're, I, I, they're just gonna sit here if we don't create content around them sure. so sometimes you, you know what I mean and that we don't distribute it in, in the right way so you know in my mind it's great storytelling combined with employee advocacy can be so powerful right. And so our next step is, um, like several other companies who have just now taking this, making this move, we're trying to make it safe for our employees to feel they can share content right. and for legal and compliance departments to be comfortable with our employees sharing content. Right. And I think that is a, it is a stickler for a lot of companies. They're, they're somewhere between, you know, should we actually put, you know, allow our employees to do this and uh, or should we put these rigid rules out there or uh, or just create enough confusion that they won't want to do it <laughs> you know whereas the marketer at these companies we know the power oh, yeah. of good storytelling yeah. and what it means so it, it really just depends you know on the company um, that and, and and what their policies are but we're trying to make it so um, we create very combine very good storytelling with employee advocacy to uh, build brand and uh, and and more B two B more customers. Right? Um, it's just uh, I think it's the future, and um, there it is. More and more companies are going to have to step up to the plate and 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 just bite the bullet and say it's 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 good. This is what we want out of our employees. So so anyway, we created content in uh, in those very very specific narrow casted sort of uh, areas, and we took those videos, and now we're creating all kinds of content around the video itself, so that. If somebody comes to us in the manufacturing world and they're just starting up, there's a whole track for starting up as a manufacturer. There's a whole track for growing as a manufacturer. And then there's a track for cash flow in the man in the manufacturing world. And that's, you know, really valuable content sure. and, and that is very focused. So, so um, I, we're excited about I it. I could summarize this with, uh, with a few observations. One, um, got to have a strategy. Uh, you got to, you know, every road looks good if you don't know where you're going. So make sure that you have a strategy. Uh, part of that strategy needs to be focus and focus on target. And as you got more focused, the content got better and more meaningful. That makes sense. Um, it also seemed like uh, this is a long term program. You've been doing it for a while. You've tested your way to success. Uh, you continue to do it. Um, one of the things that you didn't use this word, but it, it sounds like you market the marketing. I mean, you can't just create, yeah. create this uh, content. Um, and then we sort of finally get to the future of this, which is the 
employee advocacy and getting enough content in the employees' hands so that they can go out and spread the word. Because if your employees won't spread the word, then who will? Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, so, and that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's a good place for us to wrap up. So I want to thank you, yeah. uh, Judy, for joining episode seven. Here's our yeah. uh, uh, talking uh, about B2B content marketing. I've certainly enjoyed having you uh, on the show. And uh, I, enjoyed being here. I look forward to um, further conversations in the near future. Um, and I'm going to well, thanks, Drew. Thank you, Judy. And I, I wish you all the best of luck on your book as well. And uh, I hope to see you soon in New York. That'd be great.